yes, a common response there to some serious matrix algebra. Thanks, Keanu. So today we're going to do a 3x3 three three inverse as a little sort of additional exercise, um, which basically looks a bit... It's a bit like black magic, all this kind of stuff, but each step along the way will introduce you to some matrix concepts as well. So it's a, it's a worthwhile exercise, and hopefully you can follow this all the way through. And matrix algebra generally is a, a very useful thing to get your head around uh, because it's used in so many different fields, in engineering, in medicine, in obviously econometrics. Um, but whenever you've got some kind of program that's doing a mathematical operation, maybe regression or, or anything like that. Behind it all will be matrices. You can bet on it. And uh, to have a good understanding of matrices is, is worth its weight in gold, trust me. So, let's do it. Let's do a 3x3 three three inverse. So here we have our little matrix A. Uh, first step is to calculate its minors. So a matrix composed of its minors. And what I mean by that, what's a minor? Well, if we take the top leftmost element to find its corresponding minor, we block out the column it's in and we block out the row that it's in and we're left with its minor. So 3, minus 1, 2 and 5. So the top left minor is in fact that 3, minus 1, 2, 5 business. Okay, so that's our first minor. Now, if I, we obviously need nine of these minors. So, for example, let's just try this, this one here for another example, minus one. This is our second row, third column. So, again, let's block out that second row, block out that third column. And what remains is our minor for that particular element. So, one, zero, three, two. Here we go. One, zero, three, two. That's the minor for that sort of middle row, last column, element. Right. To find our matrix of minors, then we actually calculate the determinants of each of these. So the determinants of each of these little minors will give us our matrix of minors over here. So the determinant of this first minor, 3 times 5 will give you 15 minus, minus 1 times 2. So it's 15 minus minus 2 gives you 17. Remember that determinant calculation? The major diagonal, the product of the major diagonal minus the product of the off diagonal. So we've got 17 for our first one, 38 for our second one, etc. So we've got nine different determinants of these minors to form our matrix of minors of our original matrix. So that's step one. Probably the toughest step of the whole process, to be honest. The next are just little transformations of all of that. So we have our cofactor matrix, which is just a transformation of this matrix of minors. What sort of transformation? Well, we just basically take every second element and multiply it by minus 1. So we've gone 17, 38. Now we multiply that 38 by minus 1. Okay, 5 minus 6, multiply the minus 6 by minus 1, so that becomes positive 6. This 2 will become minus 2, and the negative 22 will become positive 22. So each second element, each alternative element, gets multiplied by minus 1. To form our cofactor matrix, the adjoint matrix is just the transpose of the cofactor matrix. So the top row becomes well, the first row becomes the first column. So 17 minus 38, 5 becomes 17 minus 38, 5 down this way, etc., etc. Also, for 6 minus 4 and 2, minus 9, 22 and 3, which came from here, minus 9, 22 and 3. Sweet. So the adjoint matrix is pretty much our inverse. The only thing we need to do is multiply this by the determinant of the original matrix, which is also a bit of an interesting thing that we have to do. So let's have a quick look at how to calculate the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix, which you might need to do as well outside of the context of an inverse operation. So worthwhile knowing how to find the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix. So we do it like this. We take the top left element, which is 1, and multiply that by the determinant of its minor, 
So one multiplied essentially by this thing, the determinant of its minor, which happened to be 17, if you recall. Then we take the second element and multiply it by the determinant of its minor. But the only thing we have to appreciate here is that we've got to put a minus in front of that. So zero, okay, a negative zero won't make a difference, but in theory at least we'll put a minus in front of this one, multiply it by the matrix of its, by the determinant of its minor. And then finally we add to that the third one, the third element times the determinant of its minor, which is this one. So all up, if we go scroll down to my determinant little box here, one, which is that top left column, times the determinant of its minor, minus zero times the determinant of its minor, plus three times the determinant of its minor. So the only strange thing about this is that minus that pops up in there, which you've got to keep. So for this case, the determinant of our three by three matrix was 32. So we've got to put one on 32 out the front of our adjoint matrix, one on 32 times our adjoint matrix gives us our inverse. And of course we can put that one on 32 inside this matrix here, scroll down. So multiply everything by one on 32 and you'll get this. And that is our inverse matrix of A. That's the inverse of A, A to the minus one. But an interesting question would be, what the hell have we just done? We've done all this kind of, you know, black magic type stuff, matrix of minors, cofactor matrix. What's the purpose of all of this stuff? Well, the inverse is the matrix which when multiplied by the original will give the identity matrix. Much like in linear algebra, the inverse of a number, say two thirds, the inverse of that is three on two. If you multiply them together, you get the number one. That's the definition of an inverse. And it's the same in matrix land, in the matrix, should I say. The inverse of a matrix, when multiplied by the original matrix, will give you the identity matrix. And I've got a little checker down here just to make sure that's the case. This gives me the product of this final matrix times the first one. And you can see it is the identity matrix here. So my little Excel spreadsheet here is doing everything correctly as far as that's concerned. And I'll put this back up, I'll put this uh, link up to this particular spreadsheet in case you wanna put your own little figures in here. We can change all of this stuff if we want, four, minus five, whatever. We can put new values in here and hopefully it'll all pop out and still have a, uh, an identity matrix, which is the product thereof. So that's it. That's our three by three inverse. It seems like it's a huge little, a huge process here, but uh, hopefully each step along the way, you've learned something about matrix operations as well.